Hey everybody, welcome back. Good to see you again. This time, it's a fish room update. No, what we've done, I keep saying we, it's just me. What I have done is I have done a complete overhaul, thanks to my wife that's helped with the tidying tasks. The fish room is now tidy. I can move, I can swing a cat if I wanted to, but I wouldn't. I can stand, I can get a tripod up, I can do all kinds of things. Uh, I'm so happy with this. It's going to be so disappointed for you, but it's, it's something that I'm well chuffed with, let's try to say. So, are you ready to go and have a look? Let's do that. doesn't look like much I know but it is a work in progress I do have further plans to do here but basically what we've done so far is add a load of tanks here if you remember them um, in fact it was this tank here and all these tanks were on a rickety old shelf um, so we've moved everything out built this new racking which is from Big Dug um, it's five feet long four feet long I think yeah, four feet long, uh, 180 tall. It's a bit shorter than this one, um, but that was on purpose because I'm going to get some extra tanks for up here and it's a little bit easier to reach the top of the tanks if I bring it down a little bit. So essentially what I'm going to have is this bigger tank down here, a load of small tanks here which can either be repurposed for breeding tanks, for fry tanks, for beta tanks. At the moment, there's snail factories for my puffer fish. So we'll keep them going here and then up here will be something, I'm not quite sure what. But like I say, it's a work in progress. Um, I do have big plans but I'm kind of, i miscalculated slightly and I'm out in my budget by about £100,000. So you'll find a link in the description where you can donate. No, um, but yes, I am going to get a few more tanks and start to shape this fish room a bit more the way I want it. But yes, it's clean now, that actually took away about half a dozen massive bin bags full of stuff that I didn't even know I had and um, another half a dozen full of crap that I didn't want that I was storing for no apparent reason and um, cleared out a load of space so now I've got the bottom shells on each of these racks are for filter media, um, boxes, bottles, buckets, filters, you name it and I'm going to have tanks, tanks Tanks and a bit more storage up on the top of this one. So on top of this one at the moment, it's just got the dehumidifier. Um, but that will stay as it is. On this side, we're just going to have the one big tank that we've always had. Again, maybe set up another one one day. But I'm kind of happy with this as my um, fish room display tank, if that makes sense. Um, but we've got a few more jobs, and the main one is getting this tank plumbed into these overflows. Now the main driving force behind doing this was the fact that every time I did a water change on this tank when it was over there, because it's not connected to these overflows, um, I flooded the fish room. And I think I did one flood too many, which is pretty good considering I've done about 100, 200 floods. Um, so I need to get this fail safe so I've already plumbed in the water line so as it can drip into this tank, but I've not yet plumbed in the overflow. So I need to connect this to this, and that is job number one. Okay, so I'm going to get this tank hooked up to the auto water chain system. Um, so what I need to do, I'm going to plumb into this, and what I've done is I've already cut some replacements for these pieces. Or this piece actually, that's going to sit in there with this T piece, and then I'll have a little bit of hose coming from here into there, and an overflow for the tank. Now, this has already been drilled before, otherwise, I'd have to drill it again. And um, so, all I'm going to do is drop the water line and cut off the silicon that's there, it's just patched, uh, and expose the hole again and put it in. Well, that's the plan anyway. So, let's give that a go. We need to drain it first. 
So here there is a tiny little hairline crack. I can't actually feel it. So I don't really want to mess with that because that might upset the integrity of the tank. Because it's quite high up, I'm not so worried about it blowing out the tank or anything like that. But as you can see, well maybe you can, there's actually a bulkhead already in there. So if I just reverse this to set it, in fact the work will set pretty well. Um, so I'll just turn this around to get the water level where I want it and have a hose coming down to the piece here. So we'll do that first because this is the most technical change you'll ever see on this channel. Allow a few drips. That bit out. There we go, that just slots in like this basically. Like I say, these are just compression fittings, none of this is uh, welded in because it's just very low flow, it's just trickling out the tanks and down to the drain. And just cut a little bit of pipe, if you can see on oh, these, I'll show you. So you can see all the other tanks basically have a little bulkhead, a little elbow joint and a piece of tubing that goes into the drain. So I'm going to replicate that over here. But this bulkhead is the wrong way around, so I need to turn that round, fit this, and we're good to go. The light setup's a bit of a work in progress on this tank as well. Of course, I've siliconed this one in because I've tried to stop a leak once, because it didn't actually come from there. And what do I need to put around? This is where a small fish room comes in really handy because everything's within reach. So in theory that should just pop out, but I know because it's been silicon in it probably a bit tougher. There we go. Right just use a brand new one since I've got one. So the way I'm going to use these is to have this bit outside the tank and then this elbow jammed into this. That way I can twist this end which is inside the tank and that can set the water level anything from here to here. And you always put the washer end on the water side. Well, I do at least. So I'm just going to get it hand tight. I don't want it super tight right now. Hand tight, but so tight that I can't move it easily. Um, you might have noticed all this. So this is the excess water line for the manual fill stuff that I might want to do. So this is going to sit here basically. Pumped in. I've just got little taps on at the minute so the water isn't running right now because I hadn't put the, the drain in yet. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. And because I've decided to use this one and this one, but the hose isn't long enough. Gosh darn it! So, a bit of a longer hose required. Uh, 
There we go. That's it running. Uh, there was a couple of drips, so I just needed to tighten that up a little bit. But it seems fine now. I've added on a little extension to this tube just to make it a little bit longer, make sure it doesn't leak. And then the best bit about this, if you can see here, is now that we've got an overflow, the duckweed should hopefully disappear. Yay! Right, so that's that job done. Um, all I need to do now is dial in the drip system to make sure I'm changing the amount of water I want to change which isn't very much um, it's, it's very low stock this tank, it's just plants at the minute uh, and then we're good to go uh, one tip if you are using this type of bulkhead is to make sure you squeeze them together rather than push on this side because that's how you'll crack the tank as I have done before That's all we've got going on at the moment really. So all these tanks had to be taken out here altogether. Um, which meant draining them all, moving them all out into the other room and then bringing them back in again when that was done. So just to give you a bit of a quick tour, we've got that space where it was, it's just half tools, half knickknacks. So we've got water parts, air line parts, air stones, o-rings, valves, all that kind of stuff. Uh, mixed in with hammers and all that. Oh, this thing here is brilliant. I picked this up the other day. I think it's a wallpaper scraper, but it's basically a razor blade. It's a big fat razor blade. And it's a brilliant algae scraper. Anyway. Yes, down below we've got loads of spare filter media, buckets, water containers. The planted tank. And then the snail farm that we've already seen. Um, well, this tank here is just kind of out of the way, I don't know what to do with that quite yet. Oh, and these things. So these are some of the aquarium fertilizers I've been working my way through and, and trialing. Well, it's some of them, there's a couple more. Uh, so that's a video that's coming soon. I've been looking at trying to find the best slash cheapest way to fertilize plants. That's why some of these plants down here, some of them are doing well, some of them not so well. Um, yeah, so for about six months now I've been testing various different ones and getting into, or trying to at least research, macro and micro nutrient fertilizers and dry ferts. Um, so the last thing I've been testing is one I made up myself, uh, which works out way cheaper than these things, and I can't see any discernible difference in the results that I'm getting. I'm um, getting some really good growth on certain plants. Um, but yeah, still putting all that together. Over here, We've got the salt water tank, obviously, the clownfish, damsels, hermit crabs. I've been slowly and surely breaking this down and selling off any of the corals that I had. Still got all the fish, well, these fish, uh, and one little mushroom that I've missed. Um, I just, salt water is just not for me, I don't think. I'm much more interested in the fresh water. Maybe one day, I've, one of the things I've been thinking about is this tank over here. Is making that into a big reef tank but it's just not doing it for me at the moment uh, this tank here it's just got some guppy babies in it and all the java moss nothing in this well there is something in there there are three bristle nose plecos hiding somewhere probably behind that filter and uh, the rest of the bristle nose breeding gang shrimp and guppies and more plants and then more guppies and more java moss and other plants as well. Um, on this side, not really much at all. There's one little remaining rainbow. Um, he came down from upstairs and I just wasn't able to catch him to put him back. There's a couple of cribs left over. And a few more bristle nose in here. Again, oh there's one right there actually. Probably that will camouflage in plain sight. Yeah, one thing you'll notice, the running theme is that I've not got very much in the way of livestock at the moment. Because I knew I wanted to tear this place apart. So I tried to get rid of as many fish, plants, things as possible uh, to give me a bit more space to work with. So I'm thinking, what do I want to get in here? This tank with all the duckweed. A duckweed's doing my head in. I cannot get rid of it. Nobody can ever get rid of it, I suppose. But I was thinking about buying a goldfish and giving them a job to do. I could live in this tank. 
but he'd probably uproot all the plants. And so that was another idea was maybe get some fancy goldfish for this big tank and then just scoop out handfuls of duckweed and throw it in there every now and again and let them feed on it that way. Um, just not sure, just not sure. And then thinking of a tank for up here, so that's a big four foot gap there. Um, I don't want any more tanks up there because that's just a bit too high. Um, that's my dehumidifier there, just some storage boxes. Um, here, that's where my water comes in, so I've got my hot and cold water which split off down here into a thermostatic valve kind of thing you get in a shower so I see it in old people's homes so they don't burn themselves by leaving the shower on uh, but basically splits into hot and cold uh, which then come down here so I can just have a cold bypass is why it does that but this is the one that feeds uh, the HMA filter which is this thing here so we have a sediment filter and then two carbon filters which then feeds and drips into every single tank so I don't need to worry about the chlorinator or anything like that but this is due a change so we'll touch more on that in the next video see if I can squeeze a video out of an HMA filter but this is my low maintenance easy fish room um, I rarely do water changes down here because all the tanks are on a drip system except for this one because it's annoying because it's a salt water tank and um, so it's just gravel vats and cleans and things like that that I need to do so if you're interested in starting your own fish, I would definitely recommend getting one of them. It takes a lot of the pain out. And it's cheaper. So thank you for joining me. Um, if you're interested in keeping a track of what goes on in the fish room, hit that subscribe button. It always helps. Give me a like. Give me a don't like if you don't like. Uh, and I'll catch you next time.